This video will demonstrate how to use Nginx as a web load balancer. We will be using three servers. The first server, called LBO1, is going to act as the load balancer. The other two servers are going to act as the web servers. They are named Web01 and Web02. By the way, if you're familiar with Vagrant and want to follow along, you can grab the Vagrant file below this video. Vagrant allows you to quickly create virtual machines which can act as local test and development environments. The Vagrant file attached to this video will create the three servers we'll be working with today. There's also a cheat sheet you can download that lists all the commands and configurations used in this video. Here's a diagram that shows what we're going to accomplish today in this video. We will be building a load balancer that will accept requests from clients, route those requests to a web server for processing, and send back the results to the client. If a web server isn't available, the load balancer will send the request to a web server that is up and accepting connections. There are three load balancing options with Nginx. The first option is round robin, and it ensures requests to the backend servers are distributed in a round robin fashion. If we have two web servers like we do in this case, the first request will go to the first web server. The second request will go to the second server. The third request will go to the first server, etc. If the load balancing method is not specified in the Nginx configuration file, the round robin method will be used. The next option is least connected. When using the least connected algorithm, the next request is assigned to the server with the least number of active connections. Use least underscore con in the configuration file to use this method. The last option is IP hashing. This tells Nginx to use a hash function to determine what server should be selected for a request based on the client's IP address. This makes user sessions sticky. Subsequent requests from a specific user will always get routed to the same server. If you're using round robin or least connected load balancing, a particular client's request will not be tied to a particular server. Use IP underscore hash in the configuration file for this load balancing method. Let's install a web server. You could use Apache, Lighty, or whatever. This could also be a Node.js application or a Ruby on Rails app or something else. Since we'll be using Nginx for the load balancer, I'll go ahead and use Nginx as the web server as well. These are Ubuntu boxes, so I'm going to use the app get install command to install Nginx. Just run sudo app get install engine x. Let's quickly see if it's running. And we can see right here that nginx is listening on port 80, which is the default port for HTTP traffic. By default, the document root is in user share nginx html, and I'm going to replace the contents of the index.html file in that directory with the name of the server. By the way, the exclamation mark followed by the dollar sign gets replaced with the last item from the previous command. I find myself using this shortcut a lot. Anyway, let's make a request to the web server. All right, it returns web01, which is the contents of the index.html file. Now when we make a connection through the load balancer, we'll be able to tell what backend web server we're hitting. Let's go ahead and perform the same steps on web02. I'm going to move over here to my next tab, which is uh, connected to web02. In the same commands, I'll install Nginx. Place the server name in the index.html file and make sure that it responds with that name, and it does. Okay, let's move over to our next tab, which is on the load balancer, and we're going to install Nginx there as well. Go 
go ahead and edit the configuration file. Just copy and paste the configuration I have saved here. First, we'll define our backend web servers by listing them in this stanza here. Those are the IP addresses of Web01 and Web02. Next, we'll tell Nginx to pass all the traffic to those backend web servers. Since we didn't specify a load balancing method in the web backend stanza, the round robin method will be used. Notice that we're also setting the x forwarded for header. This will contain the IP address of the client that is making the request. As far as the backend web servers are concerned, all requests are coming from the load balancer. That's true, but what you probably want in the log files on the web servers is the IP address of the original requester or client. You'll need to change the default logging configuration on the backend web servers if you want to capture that information. Let's go ahead and reload the configuration for Nginx here. Now we can start making requests to the load balancer. You can see that Web01 was the uh, backend web server that responded. We'll make another request, and Web02 responded this time. So as you can see, our round robin method is working. Of course, clients will actually be hitting the public IP address of the load balancer, so let's just do that to show that it works. And our round robin method is still in effect. Let's make it so that the sessions are sticky. Let's edit the configuration file. And then we'll add IP hash here. And we'll reload the configuration. And now when we perform requests, we're getting routed to the same web server on the back end. Again, this is great if your web application relies on sessions and stores session information locally on each of the individual web servers. Okay, that wraps it up for this video. Again, if you want a copy of all the commands and configurations used in this video, be sure to download the files below. Thanks.